Hey, Kevin here. In this video, I'm responding to a comment I received about how to record a bus um, to an audio file. So enjoy this video. Uh, pre please subscribe if you like it and uh, leave some comments and let me know how you like it. To start, I have one track with some audio that has some effects. If I click X, I can open up a mixer window and see the audio effects on that track. I will start by creating a sense to bus one, bus two, bus three, and bus four. As I create each one, it creates an auxiliary track as well. By default, the volume is set to negative infinity, which means it's at no sound. So I can option click on each one of these little slider to default it back to zero. For bus one, I'll set it as post pan. For bus two, I'll set it as post fader. For bus three, I'll set it as pre fader. And I'll also set bus four at pre fader. On the first auxiliary channel, I'll create an audio effects of delay echo, and I'll change some of these settings so it's obvious that you can hear the echo. For bus two auxiliary channel, I'll create a pitch shifter, and I'll do the same. I'll make it very noticeable that you can hear that pitch shifter. For bus three, I'll create a chorus effect. And I'll change the intensity and the rate so it's obvious you can hear the chorus. And I will leave bus four without any audio effects. Now I will create four audio tracks, each with no input and outputting to output one plus two. All four tracks are selected by default, so I'll just click on one of those and rename that first one to post pan with echo. I'll rename the second track as post fader with P shift. I'll rename the third one to pre-fader with chorus and I'll rename the last one to pre-fader. Now I will change the input for each of those tracks. The first one I'll change the input to be bus 5. The second track I'll have the input be bus 6, then bus 7, and bus 8. And I will now change the output from the auxiliaries to bus five, bus six, bus seven, and you guessed it, bus eight. So using the signal flow from bus one as an example, that initial audio track sends to bus one post pan it goes to the input of an auxiliary channel strip as bus one. It adds an audio effects uh, of an echo, and then that channel strip outputs to bus five, which is the input of an audio uh, channel. So if I click on record for that, um, that audio track that has bus five as the input, I will record um, all the audio information that goes through bus one post pan to that auxiliary track with the echo and then back to the audio track. I've, I've set up a similar configuration for bus two and bus three as well. And bus four has no audio FX added. So let's go ahead and click record for each of those four new audio tracks. And we will press record and see what happens. Recording has begun. 
And I'm going to pan left, and then I'll go ahead and pan right. And I'll change the volume all the way down and off, and I'll turn it back on again. And here you can see the four audio tracks and how you can see the waveform looks completely different for each. So let's hear what they sound like. This is post pan with echo. You can definitely hear the pan left and pan right. And you can hear the volume drop. You can hear the P shift for sure but you can't hear the pan left or pan right, and you can hear the volume drop. For pre-fader with chorus, you hear the chorus, but you don't hear the pan left or pan right, and you do not hear the volume drop. And for pre-fader with no audio effects, it's just the original audio waveform. Great, that was a video on how to record a bus. I covered how to do it using pre-fader, post-fader, and uh, post-pan, and uh, adding different audio effects so you could hear how that sounded. Please, if you like this video, subscribe and uh, leave a comment. Thanks a lot.